I am determined to finish this. <laughs> um, ran out of time and didn't know it, and I kept going on and on and on, which I can always go on and on and on. Um, but I was finishing up about how we, um, we focus on uh, finding more about the character of God, what we can learn from him, how he sees us, how he sees the world, how we um, just kind of who he is. And then we get the character of the people. And then also so important is um, every, every single lesson that I give, I try to focus it on what does that tell us about us? And what can we learn from it for our life today? Because all of these, even though they seem to have happened a million years ago, um, they have meaning for us today. Um, there's something that we can learn from these people. Um, and God cared enough to, to put their story in the, his word for purposes. And so how does it apply to us today? How does it apply to our world today? So what, what can I get out of this particular lesson. Um, so I've already went over this, but you didn't see any of it. So we're going to do it again because this is going to happen. Okay. So um, now we're going on about saws being um, rejected. Uh, and I better hurry so I don't run out of video time. Um, always fighting, always wars, thought King Saul. God did not help go with it. Let me just find, let me find my one feller that I need before I, there he is. Okay. Got him. Um, God did not help uh, win against the Philistines because Saul did not obey God. Um, the Philistines had even taken away the Israelite swords and spears and wouldn't let them make new ones. The Philistines were mighty and cruel warriors. They were used to winning. And when Jonathan, King Saul, King Saul's son, attacked a Philistine garrison and drove the Philistines away, they were very, very angry. Saul heard about this and told his messengers to sound the trumpet and call all the men to Gilgal to meet him. The people of Israel were frightened. Some said, he, we don't even have any weapons and those Philistines are fierce fighters. Some of the Israelites even hid in caves and holes and behind rocks so they wouldn't have to fight the Philistines. There's a lot of lesson in that too about how uh, Christians often hide from the enemy when we should be victorious over, it, um, over them. Not only fight, but to be victorious over these battles. Now what was Saul to do? What he should have done was remember what the prophet Samuel had told him. Wait for seven days until I come to Gilgal. I will offer sacrifices to God and pray for you. Samuel had told Saul. God would show Samuel what they should do. Um, so Samuel even told him how many days? Seven days. Just wait seven days and I will come and offer sacrifices and God will show us what to do. Um, they offered sacrifice um, to cover their sins. Um, to want to show, hey, um, we're, we're sinners, we need you. Um, the, the blood of the, the animal covered their sins so that then they can make a request before God. He could hear them and um, move on their behalf. And um, so, so Saul knew that he was supposed to wait seven days, but he was afraid because all of his soldiers were leaving him. Um, they were leaving him, uh, one, they were afraid, and two, obviously they didn't trust in his leadership. Um, and also they didn't probably respect him the way that they should. You don't leave the king, you know, in general. Um, but, uh, he starts worrying because they start leaving. And I really have to wonder if he wasn't concerned more about the way they thought about him than he even was about winning the battle. But so anyway, they start leaving him and he starts to panic. Where is that prophet Samuel? Thought Saul. I can't wait any longer. And Saul decided to sacrifice the burnt offering himself. So he says, well, if all it takes is a, a burnt sacrifice, then I'll do it. So he, he, um, he made the burnt sacrifice for himself. He should never, ever, 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 ever have done that. 
It was bad, to say the least. Only the priests were allowed to offer sacrifices. When, oh, there's, here little lambs, you're supposed to be over there. Kind of trotting around. When Samuel arrived, he was angry. You foolish man, he said to Saul. You have disobeyed the commandment of your Lord, your God, of the Lord your God. God was going to let you and your descendants be kings of Israel forever. Um, you disobeyed and now God is going to give your kingdom to a man who will obey him. And Samuel walked away. If only King Saul would obey. King Saul... This is interesting. This is a big, big lesson that we can get um, from this and also to apply to our lives today. We, we talked in junior church about Cain and Abel. This is exactly um, a, an example of like Cain and Abel. Abel offered the correct sacrifice. One thing that we learned in, in uh, junior church is it, I don't have to understand it. I don't have to agree, but I do it God's way because he is God. Um, so we learned that we don't have to um, understand we, that obedience is, is very important. And um, because when we obey, we're saying, God, you are God, I am not. Um, but uh, Abel or Cain offered um, vegetables and stuff that he had grown. But that God said, do it this way, it takes the blood. But um, uh, Cain thought that he, oh, I'll do it my way. Just exactly how Saul is doing here. I'll do it my way. I think this is good enough. Yeah, I know God how you said to do it, but I think I have a better plan than you do. Is exactly what he's saying when he disobeyed like this. Um, so Samuel told him, uh, because of your disobedience, because you're just clearly not going to listen, your kingdom is going to be taken away. One day Samuel said to Saul, I crowned you king of Israel because God told me to. Now be sure to obey him from now on. Oops, sorry there, King Saul. <clears throat> Here is a commandment God gives to you. Destroy the entire Amalek nations. They refused to let my people cross their territory when Israel came from Egypt. But did Saul obey? Nope. He kept some of the best cattle when God told him not to do this. God was sorry he ever made Saul king. One day God spoke to Samuel. I have rejected Saul as king. I know this makes you very sad, but Saul is no longer a good king. Now it is time to choose a new king. Go to Bethlehem and find a man named Jesse. Boop, doop, doop. Um, sometimes I lose my place. <laughs> anyway, go to Bethlehem and find a man named um, Jesse. Well, first of all, Samuel was afraid to do this because Saul, clearly, he's disobedient. Um, he is, um, yeah, we'll just put them all up there. Get up there, fellas. You're witnesses to this whole thing. Keep your eyes open. Hey. Guys, get with the program. All right. Um, so he's like, God, you know, if I do this, if I anoint another king, Samuel just, he, or Saul, he just might, he might kill me. And he said, don't worry, I have a plan. Go to Bethlehem and offer a sacrifice and make a feast for the people. Invite Jesse and his sons to the feast. When they arrived, only seven of Jesse's sons, we're saying this here's Jesse, only seven of Jesse's sons came. The youngest was out in the fields taking care of the sheep. Samuel looked at the oldest son. He was tall and he was handsome. Surely this is the man God has chosen, thought Samuel. But no, God said, you judge by the way a man looks on the outside. I judge what he is like on the inside. Oh, I love that about God. I love that he sees the heart. He judges by the heart. Um, I uh, am so glad that he doesn't judge me physically. Um, I'll never be an athlete with awards and um, trophies. And I, I won't, don't have the ability to, um, 
to do great and mighty things um, that the world would be impressed with. Um, I'll never, ever be Miss USA. Um, anything like that. But God, when he looks at me, I'm confident that he loves my heart. Um, I'm confident that he sees at least a few things in there that make him smile. And I love that God sees the person of the heart. And um, uh, so we're gonna see a little bit more of that. That's one of the characters of God that we talked about and how um, God judges us according to our heart. Um, because, and we talked about how uh, you can put on pretty clothes and you can do um, have fancy things and stuff like that. And there's nothing wrong with those things. But um, that doesn't impress God because he sees our heart. Um, and we went into a lot of wonderful discussions about that, um, which is uh, a wonderful characteristic, a wonderful thing that we learned about how God sees us. Um, one by one, the sons stood before Samuel, and none of them were the ones God had chosen. Are these the only sons you have? asked Samuel. The youngest is out in the field watching the sheep, answered Jesse. Send for him at once, said Samuel. When David stood before Samuel, God told Samuel, this is the one that I have chosen. When Samuel poured some oil on David's head, again, where's the oil? Why do I keep losing the oil? It's not a good thing, oil, oil. Okay, the floor is too far away. He's got a thing of oil here. We use our imagination a lot in, in junior church. Um, uh, so as soon as he saw him, God said, this is the one that I have chosen. Okay, I'm clearly having technical troubles and I might have to have someone else to help me with this um, because the camera shuts off and I don't know it and I keep rambling on. Uh, which is pretty cool, but I'm the only one listening <laughs> to myself. So, um, I talked about how uh, God chose uh, me, uh, and it, when, when I read about how God chose David, how it reminds me of uh, when he chose me. Um, but uh, I love that God, uh, the way he chooses us, and um, that he looks on um, the heart. Um, uh, the Spirit of God um, came upon David. Uh, so when he poured the oil over David, um, the Spirit of God came over David from that day on, and he received great power from the Lord. Now Samuel was no longer sad about King Saul. He knew God had chosen a better person to become the next king of Israel. Saul forgot God, was on their side, and panicked. He should have trusted God to help. Saul became impatient and disobeyed God. God often uses delay to test our obedience and our patience. Um, and uh, that one is worth repeating um, because that is a great message and it's worth me trying the third time to uh, record it to hopefully someone will, will uh, get this message. Um, Saul became impatient and disobeyed God. God often uses delays to test our obedience and our patience. Um, I have been there so many times, and I wish that I could say I have passed that test every single time, but I can't. Um, in fact, I would say more often I have not passed that test than times that I have. And um, But I learned so many wonderful things about God. One is incredible patience with me. But... Um, that he he is involved personally involved in my growth and um he loves um to see me even though i fail um he loves to to see me try and um so those delays when things aren't quite going your way and you've prayed and you've prayed and you've prayed and you've prayed, and you've prayed i'm learning now to trust and you can trust as well that god knows about it he sees it and he cares and he's sometimes using that delay to test our obedience and our patience what will we do when the pressure gets really high uh, will we obey um, so in junior church we talked uh, quite a bit about that um, about delays and um, we talked about how we don't get what we want when we want it and how